Hey YouTube, what's going on? Today we have a review of the Wubin L1, and we're also going to look at how this is a 4-in-1 flashlight. So first let's cover the basic specifications of the light. It does come with a replaceable 21700 battery. Now, that is going to include better run times and better battery life, but it also means that the flashlight's going to be a bit larger. As far as size, we're looking at, it's 5 inches long, or 128 millimeters. It's 1.1 inch in diameter, or 28 millimeters and it's six ounces without the battery. So with the 21700 battery, it is gonna be a bit heavier as well. So it is on the larger side, but in my opinion, this is meant to be more of a work light, not necessarily a standard EDC light. As you can see, it does come with a clip. It is absolutely pocketable, it's possible, but just note that it is on the larger size, so keep that in mind. One thing that I will note about the clip is that even though it is a one-way clip, meaning that you can't use it as a two-way, you can't clip it to your ball cap like that or anything, it's just a one-way clip. With this being a bit of a bigger, heavier light, it does come with a very heavy-duty clip, and I think that that's really good that they included this clip. And to be honest, I would not want to clip this light to a ball cap with the size of it. Not that it's huge, but still, it'd be a bit heavy to do that with. So I think the fact that they put on a larger, heavy-duty clip on this is exactly what you needed for this light. Also, if you check out this tail cap, you'll see that it's got this uh, diamond knurling, but it's not quite like Sofern's di uh, diamond knurling. This is much tighter, much closer together. This right here is so good because it is completely anti-slip on this tail cap meaning if I've got my hands on this they're not going anywhere if your hands are wet or whatever I mean it's it's not doing anything it's not going anywhere at all that is a really good material and as you can see like I'm just kind of like moving my fingers around it's very very anti-slip there you're not naturally going to be able to just move your fingers on there it does come with a really strong magnet on the back so like there's a some metal right there on under the table it's got a good magnet in there it's hard to pull off there the workos fc11 for example which weighs less and is a bit smaller of a light has a weak magnet in it this one right here even though it's bigger and heavier sticks to surfaces significantly better it won't slide down, it stays where you put it. It's got a really good magnet, so great job on that. Something to note on this light is I keep naturally wanting to hold it from this direction, but that's not right. Because the buttons are right here, even though this looks like the back of the light with the writing back here and everything, and you've got the Wubin brand on the front here, you have access to both emitters. You don't want to turn that on in your face and also it's weird trying to hit those buttons from the back. The way the light's set up, it's meant to be held like this. So just something to kind of note. Now it also does have a battery indicator right here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on one of these lights. And as you can see, it blinks that blue light and it takes up the entire um, LED indicator when it does blink. So that means that the battery is 90% or above. Now, if it's blanking, but it's only half full, then that's anywhere from 40 to 90% of battery life remaining. If it's red, but full, then it's 15 to 40% remaining. And if it's just half red, then it's under 15% remaining. One of the only negatives that I can say about this light is that when you're in a very dark area, I find that it's kind of distracting or a bit just off-putting to my eyes to have that blinking like that. I would rather it just be a steady light that stays on for a few seconds and then goes off instead of blinking. Now this does have a power bank feature and it kind of works the same way. So here's the USB-C right there that you can connect into. So you can actually plug this into your phone, Nintendo Switch, whatever. Charge something else and it actually comes, you know how most flashlights come with the USB A to C? This actually comes 
with the USB-C to C. I thought that was pretty cool. So with that power bank, you can plug USB-C to C into something else and charge it, and it will also show your battery indicator, and it works the same way. So I mean, if it's flashing red, then it then you know that you've already drained most of the battery kind of thing. But pretty nice to be able to have that uh, power bank feature in this light. Also, you can get manual lockout with it, so it's kind of cool. So here I'm turning on a light, right? Now, if I just barely, I mean just slightly rotate that head, I can't turn the light at all. So to do, you don't have to do like on a lot of lights where you have to unscrew it quite a bit. I mean, just the slightest little turn there gives you a manual lockout. So if you don't want, if you want to make sure this doesn't go off in your pocket, the easiest thing to do is just give it a slight little turn and you're good to go. And then just screw it back on when you're ready to go. And as you can see, just turn the light on there. Other than the USB-C to C that it comes with, it also comes with a case. Now, being that this is kind of more of a work light, in my opinion, it might be a little bit better to use the case if you're able to. But again, it can fit in the pocket. It's fine for that if you prefer. Now, let's talk about the main attracting feature of this light. And that's the fact that it has two heads with two different emitters. So on the top here, we have this deep reflector, which has an SST40 in it. So that means it's going to be able to throw a bit better, but also it's going to have a, just a great overall standard beam profile that you can use for just about everything. Some of the bending can cause it to come off with a green tint with the SST40s. Mine seems mostly okay, but just be aware of that. Other than that though, I think that's a good choice for an all-rounder emitter. And then here, as you can see, this is this emitter is almost right exactly up on the lens. So this is your flood emitter. And in mine, I went with the Osram P9. Now you can also get a 519A for that flood emitter. It's really up to you. I'll just kind of quickly explain the difference here. So with the Osram P9, you're going to get more output. You're going to get more candela. You're going to get more throw. You're going to get um, just about all the performance specs are going to be better. The main difference is that you're going to get a prettier beam out of the 519A. You're going to get a higher CRI out of the 519A. Whereas the Osram P9, I think, is like 70 CRI, the 519A is 90. So if CRI is a huge deal to you, then obviously feel free to get this with the 519A. Personally, I care a little bit more about having a higher output out of my flood. I'm not using this for photography or anything like that. This is intended to be a work light. So I've got the Osram P9 in mind. And so that is what I'm going to cover as far as the run times and the lumen output and all that different stuff. So right off the bat here with the SST40, let's look at its specifications. So it can actually run 2,000 lumens, but only for 30 seconds before step down. Now that does give you 30,000 candela, and it does have a beam that goes 350 meters. Now with the Osram P9, you can get 1,000 lumens on your floodlight out of turbo, but again, only 30 seconds until step down. 104 meters throw, which again is not supposed to be a throwy beam, it's a flood. And then 2700 candela. Now what matters the most to me on these lights is medium because that's the light that you're mainly going to be using. That's going to be what lasts you the longest without stepping down. So on medium for our SST40 here, we're looking at 320 lumens and a 9 hour run time, which is great. And on our Osram P9, we're looking at 380 lumens for 7-hour runtime. And for low, we've got 35 lumens on the SST40, running for 60 hours. And on the Osram P9, we've got 25 lumens running for 90 hours. So pretty good specs there, I'd say, especially considering what this light is. I mean, you have to consider with this really great anti-slip tail cap, heavy-duty clip, power bank feature, but having both a flashlight, a standard flashlight, and a 90 degree flashlight, being a bit on the larger size with good run times, to me, this is a work light. So with that considered, I think what really makes this light great is the fact that it's not just a two-headed light. This light is actually a four-in-one. So one thing 
that you'll see people say online in the flashlight community a lot is how great a 90 degree flashlight is that everybody needs to have a 90 degree flashlight in their inventory, right? With that said, you have this floodlight as your 90 degree and you have this all arounder or spotlight as your standard flashlight. And so obviously this is magnetic. And so you can have this shine out with your floodlight in that 90 degree angle from the magnetic, if that's what you desire or whatever. But the thing is, this has got a 180 degree turn on it. So what that means is you can turn these like so. And so now you actually have two different options for what you're using your 90 degree flashlight for and two options for what you're using your standard flashlight for. So you're really getting a four in one package here because you're getting two different options for a flashlight and two different options for a 90 degree. So for the 90 degree, now if I want, and I'm sticking this to something, but I want that um, SST40 shining directly out, that's what I can choose. Or if I want my floodlight in that OSRAM P9 shining directly out, that's what I can use. And what's cool is that they can actually both be turned on at the same exact time as you can see. So I can be using both emitters at the same time if need be. Okay. So this really is a great work light. I think that this is just about everything that you could ask for. So let's look at the user interface. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to rotate that back to standard. But it's a standard click on, click off. So one click per. So depending on what you want, this top light right here is going to be your SST40. And this bottom button right here controls the OSRAM P9. So if I click either of them once, so if I click the top one, it gives me that SST40 emitter. If I click the bottom one, that gives me that OSRAM P9 emitter. So pretty simple right there. Now, if you turn it on and you hold, you cycle through low, medium, high. Same thing for the bottom. Low, medium, high. So these are just really standard, basic user interface, easy for anybody to use. Now, if you want a bit more than that, now this is only capable for that top SST40 emitter. You can double click and that actually gives you a turbo mode. So that gives you a higher output than what your high is normally going to give you. Also, only on that top one, that SST40, if you triple click, you can get a strobe. And if you triple click again, as you can see, you get two different forms of strobe mode there. Single click to go back out of it. So you actually have access to a strobe and a turbo as well if you want it. But that's pretty much it. Really simple, basic user interface, which I think is exactly what this light needed. When I really think about this light, I think this is something that you could use in a construction type job or really any, any uh, blue collar job where you're really getting your hands dirty. I think that this is a light that you could trust for that. Strong magnet anti-slip tail, easy manual lockout, heavy duty clip, four different options for your head outputs, really easy to use inter user interface. If you're out on the job for a long time and you need to charge your phone, you can use it as a power bank. To me, this is really everything that I would want in a work light. It doesn't really get a whole lot better than this. So as far as price, I, it does run $78.99 on Amazon if you buy it for full price. However, currently, I saw that it is running a sale at $57.99. And that's kind of hard to beat for $58. So if you see this and you like it and you're kind of on the fence, I'd say for $58, just go ahead and purchase this. Let's cover the beam shots real quick. Okay, so we're outside with the Wubin L1, and we're going to start off with the floodlight, and this is going to be our OSRAM P9 emitter. And so I'm going to keep that at the 90 degree angle. And there we are in low, medium, and high. So hopefully you can see there's quite a bit of flood there. Let's go over to the tree. Lights up the entire tree there. Okay. And now let's go ahead and head over to our SST40 emitter. We're on low right now. And as you can see, we cannot reach the back of the field because we're not lighting up those trees whatsoever. 
So now we're going to switch to medium. And here, you see there's a significant difference. When we go over to medium, we can hit those trees all the way in the back. And now we'll go to high. And I'm really lighting up those trees back there. And I'm getting a really nice spill area as well. I'm going to try to capture that. If you can see that spill in person, really is lighting up everything. And we're now actually going to turn this up to turbo. And you can see that beam straight into the sky right there does a lot. Really lighten up these trees. That's a really powerful beam out of that spotlight. Alright, thank you for watching.